The built-in speakers on this Hitachi TV are really thin and weak. Wow, that sounds a lot better. What you're listening to is Sonic Pogo by Vans in Japan from the YouTube audio library. It's being played back through the Fainu 2.1 channel soundbar. It's a total of 120 watts on this soundbar. It's being recorded by a pair of Octava MK319 large diaphragm condenser microphones. I'll have full details on the Fainu soundbar coming up on Thrifty AV. In the past couple of decades, image quality on televisions has improved drastically, but audio really hasn't caught up. In fact, with this Hitachi behind me, I would say that it has gotten worse than this little TV set right here. So what am I gonna do? Well, in my living room, I use a modern surround receiver, but it's big, it's bulky, I have speakers mounted and large mains. That doesn't work in a bedroom or a den where space is limited. But this Finu 2.1 channel soundbar here, it will fit in those spaces and it does sound good this is already out of the box. Let's back up and check out the unboxing on this device. The box on this Fainu soundbar has a somewhat unusual shape and that's because it not only contains a soundbar, it contains a subwoofer. There's actually instructions on the box on how to open it. Here's a box that was within the box. It says to push this stuff through. I'm doing a little pulling. All right, here's the sound bar. And here is the subwoofer. The box within the box has an accessory box and it says remote control here. There was also an envelope with a thank you card and a warranty card. 30 days full refund, 12 month limited warranty. There's also a setup guide. Let's see what's in this accessory box. We have an HDMI cable, an optical cable, that's nice set of gloves and a TRS breakout to RCA left and right and a couple of screws with wall anchors and there was a mounting template that will help you position the screw holes if you're mounting this to a wall. Here's the remote for the sound bar. It takes two AAA batteries not included. There's bass and treble EQ controls. Not sure what that 3D button is about. I'll check on it. Here's the input selector and of course the volume. Track forward, track backward. There is some serious plastic peeling to do here. With the plastic off, you can see this mount over here where you can mount this to the wall. SW out, that's for the subwoofer. Here's the HDMI optical and aux inputs. This HDMI has ARC, which means audio return channel. On the side of this sound bar, there are controls if you're not going to use the remote. Looking over the specs, it has impressive input options, Bluetooth, regular analog auxiliary, HDMI with arc, optical, and USB. The two drivers inside the bar are 2.75 inch and the subwoofer is 5.25 inch. The two small speakers are 30 watts each. The subwoofer is 60 watts for a total of 120 watts. 
It does not say what the THD is on this. Frequency response, 45 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That is a pretty full frequency response. Signal to noise of 72 decibels is just fine. When an amp has built-in speakers, I don't worry about the impedance of the speakers. It will accept a wide variety of power inputs, so if you're not in the US, it should also work. Bluetooth is version 5 and worked fine with my telephone, the range of 10 meters. I did not fully test. And here are the dimensions to the nearest millimeter. Flipping through the sources was a cinch on this device using the remote and you could read what source it was on the soundbar. The same LED showed the volume changing and it got plenty loud when it was at full volume. There are some controls on the soundbar, but I wouldn't want to be without the remote as many of the useful features, including Bluetooth pairing, are only on the remote. The USB supports MP3 and Windows media files. Do not expect WAV, FLAC, or AUG files to work. I'm not hearing a huge difference between the music EQ setting and the movie EQ setting. But when I hit the news EQ setting, it definitely gives the mid-range a boost if you want to hear voices more clearly. The 3D effect seems to widen out the sound field, but there's no way to create a true surround sound with a 2.1 system. The mute button will cause uh, zero, 00 to blink on the soundbar. So if you see this blinking and you're wondering why you get no sound, just unmute it. If you want your TV to sound as good as it looks, the Fainu soundbar can help you do that. And with features like Bluetooth and USB playback, it also functions as a good music playback device. There is an Amazon affiliate link in the description for this soundbar. Uh, if you click on that link, it does help Thrifty AV out a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe. There's plenty more where this came from, and you won't miss any if you click the bell notification. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, and remember, stay thrifty, everyone.